flying off the ceiling, taken by this feeling. Baby, we're invincible. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Knotts County. If you're enjoying the save, drop a like on the video, that'd be awesome. Today, I thought we'd start on our good old Lily. Not just because of the name, but because, in fact, he's one of the better players in terms of progress recently. He showed up as the one of the ones to watch, which is always nice to see. That crossing is excellent. Um, the problem we've got, really, with him is that his dribbling is a bit poor, but that could certainly improve over time with the right training. But he's got great pace, acceleration, and agility. So there's a lot of things to like about Lili. He's just just not quite there, but he's still only 16 years old. He's featured in some games for our uh, under-18 under team. Not a lot. Uh, three starts, um, five substitute appearances, and one assist for him so far. So he's not exactly ripping up trees, but that, again, is probably because he's not actually natural in the attacking midfield role yet. He is being trained there, and hopefully he'll get there, and that will allow him to get some more football. But he's still got, what, two and a half years left on his contract here, so plenty of time for him to make some waves. Recently, I had my own player sent off after 17 seconds on FM18. Ended up winning it, luckily. He'd have been in some shit if we didn't. Yeah, I assume it was very similar to the one that we had, where basically they took the kickoff, our players ran off for them for a little bit, and immediately two-footed them. Great stuff. Regan Boot should get a job at Hermes instead. Actually got someone who knows how to do a delivery. To be fair, I'd rather suggest him work for Yodel. Uh, the amount of things I've ter had turned up broken from them is insane. Um, in fact, the processor I got that was broken, that came from Yodel. Total two. They're not doing well here. Maybe after this series is complete, you should try and do a total control series with Bolton. It'd be interesting to see if you can keep them up with their points deduction. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, the thing is, I really enjoyed doing total control with Wesker, but unfortunately it was terrible for the channel overall and it's really a big struggle to justify doing a save like that again unfortunately just because i don't think the interest was actually there for it um people that watched it definitely enjoyed it but there was just not enough of them unfortunately and you do, i do have to take those sort of things into consideration when coming up with series maybe to do something like that on stream perhaps i don't know can you show us how to find them regions i'm currently the manager of alfred and town would love to bring in some young fresh talent so i do this usually once per save i show you how i find the young regions people have got different methods you can look at uh national squads for the under 19s and stuff this is how i do it and it's, i find this is the most simple way so control w will bring up the world page uh, which is useful actually because the fact that we're into january makes this a lot less players to load so you go to youth intakes here um there isn't actually so far any youth intakes which is fine because it means again this doesn't takes a while to populate why then oh wait it's probably because i've been doing it. i think if i turn that off we might get some yeah there you go so um 2021 Huh, okay, so the Americans have got their youth intake already. So what I'll do is I'll turn that off because at the moment we're not able to scout most of these nations anyway, so it's irrelevant. What I'll then do is go down to, for example, in this case, Ireland, uh, because we know that they've already had one. So we go to there, then I'll flip it back because this is the one I was looking at, and then I will literally just select, I think it's up to 50 you can select, do that, go get scout report, and if you've got enough scouts, it takes a while, I promise you this. We're still not working, we've still got like another 300 to go through. The scouts will bring you a, a one report for each player. It will not tell you a lot of information, but I generally just filter. I'll have a look at some of them. If there's like, if they're like rated at 50 or below, I just don't care. You might miss a few like that, but you just have to. And then I'll slowly get more information about some of them and then just build that up. Basically, and the more scouts you've got, the quicker this will work. I'm, we, you know, we just don't have the scout numbers, although we do have another scout now. So we're up to six, which will probably help us with the next batch. And then eventually you start building up a short list of players that look a little bit decent. And then you can start picking some of them up. It's best to get them while they're young because... Th that sounds really weird uh, because they're cheaper and some of them you can get literally for free even if there's compensation do not pay it um do not approach the sign make an offer for them of zero and sometimes they'll just let you have them so that's good you can do that and that's how we got most of these guys also question of the day why the hell not let's do one who is the best manager that you've ever had at your club since you've been a fan so no like manager from the 1950s unless of course you're old enough uh, in, in which case by all means i suppose for me it has to be roy hodgson it, it just does he kept us up made us a really fun team and then turned us into a team that got to a european final i can't really i mean like slavisi akanovic just did brilliant things getting us back to the premier league but then it all kind of went a bit wrong perhaps he was, i don't know i feel like that whole season was a turning point was on that brighton game where we were tuning up and threw it away i don't really know but yeah best manager that your club has ever had in your lifetime or since you've been a fan let me know in the comments and if you have any ideas for a question of the day drop those in the comments too with the hashtag qotd right we've had some games off camera 
I've noticed something, and I think I've figured out what's been going wrong, maybe. So first up, as you can see, we beat Northampton Town 2-0. That's not really the full story here. The full story is the fact that I went and looked on our squad analysis to see which players were in the squad when we got the most points per game. At PPG, I'm looking very important at this, and who was the least. I noticed very clearly that Sam Hughes and Brandon Fleming were in the squads for a lot of our big wins and big performances, and we just gained a lot of points per game with them in the team, particularly Brandon Fleming, but Sam Hughes was up there as well. Obviously, Hughes couldn't play in this game, and how Harry Hamblin had to play and you can see he put in a really poor performance again but Brandon Fleming came in provided an assist for the first goal for Twayze who then grabbed a second should have had a third from the penalty spot but unfortunately missed it it's a shame but much much better from chance creation I think we created nine chances against Northampton and should have won by even more but it was just really, really good to see us. Uh, the second goal that Twayze scored wasn't dissimilar to the one that Sun scored against Burnley for Spurs at the weekend. Picked up the ball just inside their half, admittedly. Ran past like four players and just slotted it home for 2-0. He should have had a hat-trick, but he is now the top scorer in the division, so he's definitely getting somewhere. Good guy, easy T. 2-0 victory. As then, we went away to Oldham in the next game. This was a very strange one. It was looking like it was heading for a nil-nil until the ball was whipped in by, I think, Curtis Jones and then Alex uh, Yakoviti. Yeah slide tackled it into his own net which was frust well, frustrating for them anyway unfortunately they immediately equalized from a corner which is a bit of a shame but then two minutes later up the other end I brought on Neil Harkin instead of um Tweezy because he was having a poor game and struggling a little bit with a knock ball lumped over the top of all things by Brindley I think it was no it was Duhaney and Harkin actually got on the end of it took it down slipped it in the bottom corner goal on his debut for the six foot seven man mountain scoring a one-on-one -on -one after being put through behind the defense not how I expected him to score his first goal for the club his first ever appearance for us and he scores on his debut to give us the win against Oldham what absolute legend and he became the youngest ever scorer in league two as well as our youngest ever scorer at 16 years and 155 days he's six foot seven at 16 years old we're gonna need a double decker bus to transport between games soon because he's not gonna be able to stay on the lower deck then unfortunately though the next game was quite literally there was one game in between sorry one day in between which meant it was a very very tired team had to go out against Grimsby they had a pretty tired team as well we rested a load of players and just couldn't really get going in this game still had one chance i think which was yeah now mcphee created an opportunity and didn't play too badly in this game but seventh place grimsby we got a nil nil draw there so it's not the end of the world i'm glad we didn't lose the board were pissed and i was like really league wise that leaves us like this we're fourth in the league but now only one point separates the top five teams I mean, that is saying something. Like, that's actually incredible to be 25 matches into the season and to have one point separating the top five. There's a very good chance that we could get automatic promotion or a playoff spot right now. We're 10 points into the playoffs, essentially, and that's really where we want to be. Toizzi is now top scorer with 12 in the league, which is great. Booty's still best average rating, but he's not played so much lately and he's not been quite so fantastic, to be fair. Uh, it is amazing that we've lost and drop so many points against the teams down at the bottom. It's ridiculous. But hopefully today we can pick things up again as we've got Cheltenham, I think, who are sixth in the league and we've got Carlisle, who are currently top of the league. Hopefully we'll have Hughes and Fleming and things can really start to take off again in the right direction because I'm, I'm enjoying it now. You know, we're at home against Cheltenham. This should... Our, our form is definitely improving, which is, which is nice. So I'm going to just do a quick pick to reverse everything back because we've made so many changes lately. So Tweezy, Jones, Baldwin are uh, definitely not... Although actually... Yeah, we might have to do that because I promised Matt O'Reilly I'd give him a rest and I really do need to keep resting him and Booty because that's the one area where we could just do with a little bit more depth is the central midfield roles. I'm thinking about maybe bringing in another loan signing if we can. But the back line though, Fleming, O'Shea, Oliver, Duhaney, really nice. And of course, a conquering goal. But to have both Hughes and Fleming back is really, really important. They both perform excellently with this team and I'm glad to see them back. Um, everybody's fairly fresh too, which is very useful. So on the bench, we're going to go with Culverwell, McCrory, McPhee, Thomas Brindley, Sousa, and Ron Coates, who I'm retraining as a striker uh, as well, because again, there's some issues with some of these guys, and I want to make sure we make the most of their attributes while they're young. So it's a back three for Cheltenham, similar to that which Plymouth played. Uh, Niall Ranger, of course, up the top for them still. Uh, was it Ryan Broom? Yeah, I think he scored a... Mm. Okay, so I'm not going to do what I did against Plymouth, which is moved to two up top. I'm going to try to persist with what we're doing and hope that we're a bit better. We've definitely looked much better in the last few matches now that we've got the right players back in the right positions. And also, they are lacking fitness in a lot of positions, so that could help us too. Let's go. We have also now had the Brexit, so that's actually happened in the game for the first time in a while. Oh, surely not. <laughs> oh, no. Um, penalty good. Injury bad. Uh, wait, they both picked up injuries? Will Boyle injured himself while tackling Baldwin. Mitch Rose, and he scored. Well, there's one good thing to have Mitch Rose in the team, and it's to give us the lead inside the first minute from the penalty spot. He can score a pen, but I'm worried about Baldwin. I am very, very worried about Baldwin. Let's see how this turns out. It's good to be in front, 
And if that means we can hang on to a 1-0 win, then I would take that. But the injury to Baldwin is, is a concern. You know what happened last year. I've also got Tweezy working on uh, final third in training, which should in theory help with his composure. So hopefully we can boost that a little bit too. Oh God, now Curtis Jones has gone down injured. So Baldwin is recovering from a knock and he seems to be okay, but now Jones is hurt. Also, here's a weird one. We got fined 15 grand by the FA for playing, not playing enough qualifying players in the uh, leasing.com nobody cares about this trophy game against Everton. Too easy. It's a bit too deep and he's all the way through. Should have scored, really. Three clear cuts already in 17 minutes. Well played, lads. But yeah, I just found that a bit weird because I figured something would have popped up and been like, there's not enough eligible players in the squad or something. But it seems that that didn't happen. McPhee! Oh, Niall. Oh, he's offside anyway. That was a chance, though. Or oh, it wasn't, I suppose. But, like, we're creating opportunities again. Uh, Trying to clip it through. And Booty's in. Can he slip it through for someone? Baldwin's back on it. He's in again. And it's well saved by Boston. And how have we not scored another goal? On the plus side, it's nearly half time. And we've not had them have a single shot. But on the downside is the fact that we've created, what, five chances in the first half? And the only one that's actually gone in was a penalty. So, yeah. Bit concerning. But the defensive side of things is working like a treat right now. Six first half, six first half chances created. I mean, that is some sensational creation, but we've just not managed to score another goal. Try and win a bit more possession. Coates, he can dribble for days, I think, this guy. Blocked. Dehaney. Ball in. Booty. Rose might fancy it. Oh my god. Mitch Rose. He has just single-handedly won us this match. Our players can't finish their dinner. Mitch Rose comes in and goes, guys, I've got this. Um, he scores the penalty really level-headedly, but this is an absolutely brilliant finish. Is it first time? Oh my god. God, Mitch. I mean, he has won us this match by himself. But it really is very interesting how even when they don't play particularly well themselves, having Fleming and Hughes back in the team really just improves us from a creative standpoint. And I don't really know why. Hughes just mops that up easily. Booty. Driving into space a bit more. Rose. Oh, Coates is in. Coates is in. Ron Coates couldn't quite finish it off there. Really should have had another goal at the last stages. And he's been fouled. That looks like it's going to be a red. Yeah, it is. Rowan Ince has been sent off. Uh, for a late challenge on Regan Booty. He couldn't handle the booty. And there we go. Notts County 2, Cheltenham 0. That is about as perfect a performance we've had for a while. Lack of possession, a little bit frustrating, but there you go. Created eight chances against Cheltenham. And somehow the two goals we scored were a penalty in a long ranger for Mitch Rose. He has saved us in that game because that could have easily been the exact same thing as that Colchester match, except with way more chance creation. Um, brilliant. Really, really needed that performance. And now suddenly we've gone from being unable to win to three wins in four and keeping clean sheets for days too. This is really good. Right, we're back. Slight downside, uh, Neil Harkin broke his foot in training and is going to miss four months. And that's such a shame because he's got, it really does seem like he's got a real quality about him. And it would have been nice to have him actually get some first team time potentially off the bench at some point. But it looks like that's not to be. And also, I keep resting Booty and O'Reilly as in actually saying to them, I'm going to rest you. But the problem is you rest them for one game, bring them back in and the news article comes up again saying they could probably do with a rest. I'm like how what like i get it but like come on surely it should last a bit longer than one match so i essentially had to turn down uh the one for booty this time because we need him to be in the team i want booty and o'reilly for today we want the foot strongest foot forward unfortunately not gonna happen because curtis jones has got strained knee ligaments and is gonna be out for like a month uh so that's not good but it does mean more chances for first team football for niall mcphee and i'm willing to give him that you know Despite how well Mitch Rose did in the last game it's good to have booty and o'reilly getting getting this trio back together the three amigos in the middle Everybody else, though, happy to go with that. On the bench, McCrory, Souza, Wes Thomas, Brindley, Mitch Rose, obviously, just in case, and, of course, Ramey Campbell. There are other, like, under-18 and under-19 games around today, so that's why the others aren't around. We played super well against them in the first game, and we probably could have won, but they had that real quality about them. Hopefully, we can, I don't know, hold them? If we took a draw against them away from home, I'd be ecstatic with that. Also, we do remain in a third spot in the league at the moment because Bolton, I think, lost or drew their game in hand or something, so we're right in there still. It's still incredibly tight, but we're having a good crack at it. The fight is very much on for that automatic spot. I haven't scored a, an automatic free... Oh, well, I was going to say, we haven't scored a direct, an indirect free kick for ages. And Nabil Tuizi has come up with another 17 goals this year now. Starting to find some joy in this guy's play again. Charlie Oliver with a wonderful assist. I think it's just that one where he heads it back across. Yeah, and sliding to... Oh, he's done the splits. He's got the goal, though, and we lead away at Carlisle. Is it Brundle Park? Quick question. We've had four shots, none on target, yet we're in a goal up. I mean, did that not count as a shot or something, the one that we scored? McPhee. Tuizi. Headed away. Ah, so if we could get on that, we might still. M Booty? Oh, he should have scored. He has to score there. That's such a good chance for Too Easy. Lovely work from Booty with that little slide rule. Well, I said I'd set up for a draw, and right now we're getting a win. So that's something. And O'Shea! Oh my god, we're getting so many good chances from free kicks again. It's nice. It's refreshing. It's been a while since we've had some good opportunities and really making something of those. Booty. Round the side for Noah McPhee! Oh, his finishing just let him down. 
were doing bits to them on the break. 1-0 up through Nabil too easy, though, from that uh, set piece. Really good start to the game, though. It's a long way to go, but we could somehow find ourselves going back to the top of the league. Like, we really have rejuvenated our form again. And I think it's down to the fact that Hughes and Fleming are back in the team. I've termed time-wasting on as well, so hopefully we can just kill off the final 10 minutes of this one and see out a 1-0 win, because I don't really know what else we can do. Very close. Oh, God. Terrible defending. Sagaf's through. Oh, was that a save from a conquer? I don't know. And that's thing Stan Carlisle would actually drop down to third place. Booty's ball again. And O'Shea puts it in and that's finished things off. Notts County 2-0 up away at Carlisle. And suddenly, now that we've got the right core units back in the team, Booty with another pair of assists. He seems to have got right back into form with his deliveries again. Great work from Dara O'Shea at the back post. Two set piece goals it's required, but we've got the victory it would seem. And that's going to do it. 2-0 away at Carlisle United. Another clean sheet. A man of the match for Regan Booty. His first man of the match award for quite some time. And that's brilliant. One assist. I swear he was the one that put the ball. Oh no, of course it was Charlie Oliver's header, wasn't it? And that leaves the league looking like this. We're back on top. 54 points on the board now. Everybody underneath tied on 52, then Bolton. But we're in a really, really good spot. 13 points clear of dropping out the playoff spots now, which is the main thing. And a 2-0 win away at Carlisle United. That's huge. And now a really good performance for Regan Booty moves him to the top of the... Uh, uh, player of the match awards list which is always very very nice indeed to easy still battling it out with the top scorers i think there's definite potential for him to keep pushing there really really pleased but look the moment we got ourselves back into form again got the right players back in the team we've suddenly not conceded a goal in five sorry we've conceded one goal in our last five matches it's it's crazy how the tiniest little changes can make the hugest difference but do have a look at things like your ppg that's what I did, and that's why I realised that Brandon Fleming and Sam Hughes were so important to this squad. Um, but there we go. Two massive wins in huge games. Next episode, ooh, what do we fancy? Oh, poor, poor, oh, well, it has to be Scunthorpe, doesn't it? Third place Scunthorpe at home. Do a big chunk of games off camera, come back for Scunthorpe. That's going to be huge, because that could be one that could send us further clear, or if we get some more injuries, we could be back in the mire again. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, and I really hope you have, drop a like, that would be fantastic. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I'll see you guys very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>